الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلاة حي على الصلاة الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise are due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى We praise him then we seek his assistance and forgiveness and we seek the refuge with Allah from the evils of ourselves and the mischief of our deeds. 
whomsoever is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can, guide, can misguide him. And whomsoever is misguided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can guide him. Then I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without partners. And that Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is his slave and messenger. O who you believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die except in the status of Islam. O mankind, fear Allah who created you from a single person who is Adam alayhi salam. And from him he created his wife and from both of them he created all the men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and be heedful of the family ties. Indeed, Allah ever watches over you. O who you believe, fear Allah and say righteous words. He would rectify your affairs and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, he and she indeed achieved a great achievement. Indeed, the best speech is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And the worst things are the innovated things and every innovated thing is bid'ah and every bid'ah is misguidance and every mis misguidance is in the hellfire walayadu billah. Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, we have been hearing concerns lately from Muslims and even non-Muslims mainly about the future of Islam and Muslims in America. And that's mainly, of course, coming from what's going on in the last few months before the election, after the election results, and after the ex ex some of the ex executive orders. And while those concerns are valid, however, some of those concerns led into some pessimistic conclusions and statements by some of our brothers and sisters. Such, it's over for Muslims in the U.S. There is no future for Muslims in the U.S. We should look for somewhere else to live. We started to be embarrassed to express or identify ourselves as Muslims. We started to feel concerned and afraid with, uh, praying in public. Some of the sisters, it started to become a problematic for the sisters to continue wearing the hijab in the same way that they, they did before in public. So they started to make changes in their hijab so it can look as a nut hijab, turban, hat, whatever it is. And in fact, I've known and heard about some, if a few sisters ended up with taking the whole hijab away, Wallahu al-Musta'an. And I wanted to take that chance, inshallah, today to remind myself first and everybody else what should be the normal response to those valid concerns. And of course, if we come up with my personal opinion and your personal opinion, it, we, we, we may disagree and discuss it for the, the, the rest of the day because they are at the end of the day personal opinions. But we as Muslims, always our source is to go back to the Kitab and the Sunnah because we find really our solution, our answers in them. And inshallah I will focus on two stories from the Quran, because the stories in the Quran, when they are mentioned, they are not mentioned to enjoy ourselves or to have fun reading the story. They have ibar, they have mawa'idat, mawa'id. They have, there is something, say, some benefits we can conclude from each story mentioned actually in the Quran. And the two stories will be number one, Ghazwat Uhud and Qusat Musa alayhi salam. And I will start with Ghazwat Uhud. Although both, by, by, by the way, both the stories are so extreme examples if we would compare them with the situation that we live in as Muslims in the U.S. But always it's helpful to look at extreme way examples. Why? Because the contrast makes things clearer. In other words, we all know that 
the dark, the black color is dark, is the darkest. And the white is the lightest among the colors. But you may not realize how dark the black is and how light the white is until you put them next to each other and that will make it so clear in your eyes and my eyes. And that's the purpose of me, me taking those two examples to discuss. All of us know about Ghazwat Uhud, how the Muslims were defeated very badly by the Mushrikeen at that time. And we all know the main reason because some of the companions did not follow the command of the Prophet Muhammad by staying on the uphill. They went down and that made them lose it, lose the battle at the beginning. At the beginning because, and because of that, 70 companions, one of the best companions, they died because of that. And in fact, the Prophet Muhammad himself, he was, he lost his four of his teeth and his face was wounded and his blood started leaking on his holy face, However, many of us don't know how was the end of the story of Ghazwat Uhud. So that was actually the first day when they lost those companions, that 70 companions, when they lost the, the battle. However, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ did not want to go back to the Medina with having this feeling in the hearts of the companions that they lost the battle. And that may affect their iman because they Allah did not support them if, if, you, if they started thinking about it that way. So this following day, the Prophet Muhammad asked the companions, let's get back and fight the mushrikeen again. Just the following day. And of course, the response from the companions, they will say, oh Prophet, we'll go with you. So they went and got together in an area called Hamra al-Asad. And they started getting prepared, getting ready to fight the mushrikeen again. Although they were deeply wounded from the, pre, from the day before, so exa exhausted. Deeply wounded the day before. They started to prepare the fire in, the, in that area so the person who would or the people who would, who would pass uh, by that area, they would think that the number of the Muslim army is even much, much bigger than the reality because they are trying to make the, 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 the war, the psych, psych, psychologist war against their, their enemies. Now, when Abu Sufyan heard about this, that the Prophet ﷺ and his companions are, tr are getting ready and getting prepared to fight them again, Abu Sufyan knew at that time when he was not Muslim that his people are not going to be happy to fight the Muslimin again, although they won the day before. But those people are not the people of faith. So they will, not, they will think 100 times before going again and fight the, Musli the Muslimin even though they, they won the day before. So he wanted to save his, himself and his people that fight. So he, tr he wanted to use the media. And the media in our time, it's of course the TV ch channels, the uh, newspaper, the internet, so forth and so on. At that time, the media sources was just to use people. Abu Sufyan used people to go and tell the Prophet Muhammad and his companions that Abu Sufyan this time got prepared so ready with even a bigger army than the army that he had the day before. And those people are so eager now, not only to, to win again, they are so eager to get rid of every single Muslim and their family members and even the Islam. So fear them. The purpose, media is very strong weapon if it's used right. So he's trying 
to insert the fear, insert the fear in the hearts of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. And what was the response? Did they say, no, we can't because, in fact, although if we think, we think, wallahi, if we were with them, that would be the normal response. If we did not win the day before, we were deeply wounded, we are so exhausted, we are not as ready as we were the day before. If you think it, about it in worldly manner, there is no way we would win again. Especially now Abu Sufyan has even bigger army than that probably the normal response that we would think about it from worldly manner that no, we, we should escape and we should take the safe way and we should probably try to avoid our family members to be killed uh, and so forth and so on. فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased their iman and وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Here is the key that I'm trying to reach. They said, Allah is, subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for us. He is the best to rely on. And what was the outcome? فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلٍ لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُوء They went back to the Medina with the reward of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Number one. Number two. They made some money out of trade they, they did when they were traveling out of the Medina and they were not injured anymore. Lam yam says home su. Because the mushrikeen, they felt so afraid to go and fight the Muslimin. So the Muslimin went back to the Medina without e e further injuries. And they had now, they went back with the attitude, with the feeling that actually they won. And indeed they won. They lost the day, the first day, but not the second day. إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ فَلَا تَخَافُهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Indeed, actually, it is the shaytan who tries to insert the fear in your hearts. So do not be afraid of the mushrikeen and be afraid of Allah. And this is the chance for the shaytan to insert the fear in our hearts to make us not practice our religion by making us exaggerate the fear, the concern to a fear and even we sometimes, uh, that, that, that leads to way or another, we don't practice our religion. We don't identify ourselves as Muslims. And subhanAllah, the same statement was made and the same reaction was made by Ibrahim alayhi salam when the fire was pre prepared to kill him. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, his reaction was the same. He said exactly the same statement. Allah is sufficient for me and he is going to take care of me. And what was the outcome? The Fire was cool and peace on him. And after the fire actually vanished, they found him praying in the, in, in the middle of the fire. In the middle of the fire. That was the first. And, and, and the, why it's extreme example? Because look at, the, look at our situation now. Alhamdulillah, we are not in a war with anybody. That's number one. We are so peaceful people. Number two, there is... It's only just the theoretical war, if you will call it. It's just some changes in the policy here and there. Yes, there, there is increase in hate crimes in many states against Muslim. But alhamdulillah, that does not mean that the, the majority of Americans, they think that way and they are taking, they are just waiting for the chance to kill a, to kill a Muslim. Increasing the hate crime does not mean that the whole Americans are waiting just to kill us if they see us. And if we think that way, that everybody would see us in the street will harass us just simply because we, they know that we are Muslim, we are, then we should not blame non-Muslim to think that Muslims are terrorists because a minority of Muslims call them Mujahideen, they call themselves whatever, Islamic State, 
they are actually committing in the name of Islam all of those crimes. And because of that, the many people, unfortunately, they think that the Islam and all Muslims are all about that. Then we are, we are doing the same mistake. If we think because of minority of people have been harassing Muslims or doing hate crimes against, against Masajid, it means that this is the direction, this is the thinking of the majority of Americans. No, even the millions who, who voted for one person, they, they did not vote just because they want to get rid of Muslims and Islam. There were many other reasons they were focusing on to, to make that person win. Not, not the very minority just were focusing about Islam, Islam and Muslim and ban, banning the Muslims so forth and so on. Briefly, the second story. We all know the story of Musa alayhi salam and how Fir'aun wa was looking after him with his people and Musa uh, alayhi salam with his, his com uh, companions reached to the point that they are next to the sea. And they looked in front of them, it's the sea. Looked behind them, it's Fir'aun and his army. <laughs> The people of Musa, they had the same reaction that we, we, many of us had. It's over for us. We'll be killed. It's the end. Because the sea is in front and the army of Fir'aun is in the back. But what, what, what uh, Musa السلام, said? He had the full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, no, Allah will guide me away to, say, to, be, uh, to save me and save all of us. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Musa to hit the sea with his stick, and the sea became a solid ground for them to pass. And then we know that Fir'aun and his army donned, uh, d died in the sea dawning. So again, the same response, tawakkal Allah, full trust of Allah, uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's sufficient. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Allah said in Surah Al-Talaq, whoever makes sincere tawakkal on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will be sufficient. But as long as we do the sincere tawakkal. And dear brothers and sisters, I haven't been here in the U.S. for that long, but I've read and I've heard about similar things happening after 9-11. And what was the outcome? Did, did Muslims vanish? No, alhamdulillah, we continue to grow in number. And in fact, according to some stat statistics I read, in America only, in, within nine months span after 9-11, 32,000 accepted Islam. And in Europe, 20,000 accepted Islam because all of the attacks that they started to hear and see against Islam and Muslim that made them so curious to know what Islam is and what, what is it about. And when they read about Islam and they knew how it is exactly opposite to what it is, how it is proposed to in the media, they, they, were, they were sincere and they accepted Islam. <laughs> Don't think that everything, don't think it is necessarily worse, disadvantages for Muslims. It could be advantages. Dear brothers and sisters, it's part of the tawakkul is to take the means that helps you to get the target that you are trying to achieve. In other words, we all believe that Allah is our razaq who controls our rizq, but yet, we all go and work so we can earn money and pay our bills, right? We, nobody stays at home 
saying that Allah controls the rizq, I'm going to have full trust in Allah and I'm going to wake up and find the money below uh, my pillow. It doesn't work that way. And if anybody thinks like that, that person is not, is not making full sense. And the same thing, although we have full trust in Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the protector, is the, who, is the one who protected the Muslims in this country all of those years and will continue to protect Muslims in this country for the future. However, we have to take whatever means to protect our community, whether it's at local level, whether it is at national level. How? Whether it is, it, it, it means that by reaching out to some political parties, with, uh, which, uh, with, uh, whether it uh, means that we have to reach to some people who are in charge in, in, in government positions, with, uh, whether it reaches to do some demonstrations, whether it is uh, about re reaching out to the care or some of those Islamic institutions or the civil rights, human rights. Civil, uh, civil human rights, institutions, so forth and so on. Doesn't mean if we have the full trust in Allah that we stay home and we say Allah will protect us even though if I was oppressed because I am Muslim or I was harassed because I, I am Muslim or any cry, hate crime was committed against our community. Doesn't mean like that we, we should not do any reaction. And alhamdulillah, many people are so supportive. We had many people coming to this masjid and to other masajid expressing their support to Muslims. So alhamdulillah, it's still good. We're still good. We should not so exaggerate the concern. And uh, for the few people who attended the open house that happened, that, that, that undergone here, in the Hidayah, alhamdulillah, we had very good number of non-Muslim attended the open house, the, uh, the breakfast open house, and they all had the same support, the same statement they made. Hada wallahu alam, whatever right you heard from me, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and whatever wrong is from myself and the shaytan. So I ask Allah forgiveness for that and then your forgiveness. In Allah, we will be able to do it. In the name of the Lord, we will be able to do it. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim. Fil alameen in the Kahamid of Majid. Allahumma filana the Nubana. Allahumma tajawad an sayyatina. Allahumma ya mukalibal kulub. Thabit kulubana ala taatik. Allahumma la tafina wa infatantana for Sabirna. Allahumma la tafina wa infatantana for Sabirna. Allahumma la tafina wa infatantana for Sabirna. Allahumma mitna ala tawheed. Allahumma mitna ala Islam. Allahumma rudd al Muslimina ila dinika raddan jamila. Allahumma rudd al Shabab al Muslimin ila dinika raddan jamila. Allahumma di Nisa al Muslimin. اللهم اهدي شيوخ المسلمين اللهم اهدي رجال المسلمين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه لكل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين شرا فخذه إليك أخذ عزيز مقتدر وجعل دائرة السوء عليهم يا رب العالمين اللهم فارج الهم كاشف الغم مذيب دعوة المضطرين فرج هم المهمومين وغم المغمومين من إخواتنا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم أطعم جوع المسلمين استي أطاشهم آمن روعاتهم استر عوراتهم اللهم شاف مرضاهم عاف جرحاهم اللهم كن مع مبتلاهم اللهم انصرهم على من عداهم يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبيك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما سعاد به منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم آمين Finally, I have an announcement about uh, the Islamic knowledge competition. Uh, many of you uh, heard about it. Uh, Inshallah, uh, it will be open book competition, meaning uh, depends on youth, uh, on your age, whether if you are youth, uh, 12 to 18, or adult, uh, you will get 200 or 250 questions. And they are not so complicated questions. They are, most of them, in the general uh, Islamic knowledge about aqidah, fiqh, sirah, and the science of the Quran. 
and it's again open book, so you will have almost two months of time to look for the answers to some uh, methods, inshallah, Sheikh Yasin will talk about today, uh, in, in this evening. But this competition, not only it may helps all of us to gain more knowledge in Islam, which is not necessary knowledge, it has very prestigious uh, prize. The person who wins will get Umrah for free, including the hotel, flights, meals, whatever it entitles. And inshallah, if you win, you go Umrah, don't worry, make tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will get back to the country. So don't worry about that part. Inshallah, there will be the deadline for registration. Uh, it's approaching. It's March 1st. To understand more about it, there will, there will be open the tables uh, after the Friday prayer. Uh, you can ha take flyers if you don't have time. Read about it. It's available on the website as well. Uh, registration, you could do it here. You could do it online as well. And if you don't have time because you have to go back to work now, there will be an uh, open session at 7.30 by Sheikh Yassin today to talk more about this competition at 7.30, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala.